Anderson, thank you very much. I, thank, I want to thank all of you for being here, but more importantly, for having the courage of your convictions and fighting for those convictions in your neighborhoods. Thank you very much for what you do. You know, this, this is the Frederick Douglass Foundation, so I just want to briefly uh, talk about what he was about. And uh, nothing says it better than his quote. I will unite anybody to do right and no, unite with nobody to do wrong. And he was talking about freedom amongst all people, black, females, American Indian, recent immigrants. That's what he was talking about. And you notice he was talking universally. It wasn't just about his race, but he was talking universally. Martin Luther King said the same thing very well in his letter from a Birmingham jail. Well, he said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And you know, again, he's talking about universal rights. Rights that come from our Declaration of Independence. That we are endowed by our Creator, not by government, but by our Creator, with certain inalienable rights. Among those, life, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So we, and this is what the Republican Party is about. We're about liberty. We're about freedom. But also, along with freedom comes personal responsibility. You need both. And you need opportunity. Now, when we talk about opportunity, we mean equal opportunity. <coughs> not not the, 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 if you don't have equal opportunity, you're not going to, not equal outcomes when we talk about equality, but we mean equal opportunity. That's where we're about. And our history goes back to Lincoln. Anyone see the, uh, the movie Lincoln recently, oh, the 13th yeah. Amendment? Yeah. Isn't that a great movie? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what the Republican Party is about at its foundation. And I can trace that through, but it would be a long need to do that through all our history whether it's Brown versus Board of Education, Earl Warren, Republican Governor of California, then Chief Justice of the United States, unanimous course that he led for integration, getting rid of Plessy v. Ferguson. Or I can talk about my father one did, what President Nixon did. The South was 90% segregated when he came into office. And he put George Schultz on, he backed them completely, and, and he made his 90% integrated when he left office. Or what he did with the Philadelphia plan to start integrating the trade unions. Or what he did with bridges to human dignity and black capitalism so that there is freedom and opportunity. This is what the Republican Party is about. But let me talk about what current things, some of the most important things. If there's any civil rights issue of our time, it's education now. Amen. Equal opportunity for education in our inner city schools. That's what we stand for, and that's what we fight for. Now, you know, it was kind of rough here in New York State. Governor Pataki wanted to have charter schools, which gives choice in the inner city schools. And they tried time and time again, and I was a trustee of State University at the time, and I watched him do this. 1998, December of 1998, he made a final push for it. Here's what he said to Shelley Silver. So always stopped in the assembly. Public consent had voted for it, he was for it, it was stopped in the assembly. So he said to Shelley Silver, you want a raise, don't you? You want to get a raise for all your members of the assembly. They had to vote for it that uh, December, else they wouldn't get it for another two years. I'll give you your raise, but you've got to vote for my charter school. Guess what? Shelley Silver went ahead and the Democratic Assembly voted for it. And we got charter, a very good charter bill here in New York State. And he asked me, as a trustee to chair the, the State University Committee that, that supervised the authorization of one half the charter schools here in New York State. And uh, now we've got 100,000 students in, in charter schools in New York City and other cities, and here in Rochester too, uh, because of Governor Pataki and the courage of his convictions to get charter schools. Let me tell you, they work. New Orleans, 
Bobby Jindal. Anyone follow what he's doing down there? I see he has not. Yeah. You know, look, there's a terrible hurricane that interrupted everything, and he became governor there. He had a chance to do something, and he had the courage of his convictions as a Republican governor. Uh, and he went out and did it, and now New Orleans is almost all charter schools, and it's gone from being in the bottom third of the school systems in the United States to being in the top third of the school systems because they have school choice in New Orleans. That's what it's been doing. That's what we fight for. But the reason I was asked to do this as, uh, as a trustee is that uh, this is a fight that I was a part of going way back. In the Reagan administration, there was a, a commission on education. And you will remember this. It was called, and they produced a report called A Nation at Rifts. Anyone remember that? I see some. Yeah, a nation at risk. And we were at risk because, in part, our inner city schools were not doing the job of giving an equal opportunity for good education to inner city youths. Something had to be done about it. Government wasn't doing something about it. So a very good friend of mine named Peter Flanagan asked me to join a foundation. Because here, here's what the situation was. Parochial schools in New York City, in their high schools, had empty seats. Yet they were doing a better job of educating inner city youths than the public schools were. And in a way, they were the original charter schools. And so to fill those seats, we got lawyers and businessmen and investment bankers to mentor youths into those inner city schools to help those youths. But we also wanted to make a point uh, that how good these schools were, they could in fact work compared to the inner zoned inner city schools. So we didn't take the cream, the very best, nor did we take the bottom third. We took the average student. We made sure it was the average student. That they were, they, they, had the, they were on the free lunch program, they had perhaps one parent or just a grandparent. Uh, we made sure we took the average student. And uh, we measured them into the parochial schools. That student had a 20% of graduating from the New York City schools. That student, we proved, four years in a parochial high school. By the way, the parochial high schools have something that charter schools don't have. They give a moral education, a religious education, in addition to a good education. That's one thing that makes them very effective. And in the end, that student that had a 20% chance of graduating from a zone inner city high school graduated 70% graduation rate. And 90% of those went on to college. And we proved that these alternative schools, these parochial schools, could do twice the job for one half the cost. And that was a, and that proved a major point about what alternative schools could do. So now we've got a lot of alternative schools. 100 black men, great group down in New York. They've got their own uh, Eagle Academies, very successful schools. Uh, and this is what we Republicans stand for, school choice. The Democrats here in New York State are still fighting it tooth and nail. Why? They got unions, and also they just want the status quo. The status quo suits them, suits them politically. So we are fighting civil rights issue of our time. Another issue, jobs. New York City has been bleeding our, our job creators for years. And our young people go elsewhere to find jobs. They leave this state to find jobs. So we have a governor, uh, Andrew Cuomo. And you know what he really focused on? He puts all his political cap on gay rights, gay marriage. He puts his political cap on late-term abortions. And other things that appeal to the special interests of his party. Look at maybe at his political future. He hasn't paid attention to the fact that we are the least business friendly state in the United States, we have the highest taxes in the United States, we have the highest energy costs in the United States. Uh, that's why our kids leave to other states to find jobs. We Republicans stand for pro-growth programs. We want to cut taxes, we want to cut regulations, we want to lower energy prices. There's a way of doing this. It works. Ronald Reagan, I worked in the Reagan administration, he proved it could work. You do that, you create jobs. You create an economy that's grown. And 
as opposed to a colony like New York, which which is not. And you know, the Pope said recently, where there's no job, there's no dignity. You need a job to have dignity. So that's what we Republicans stand for. We stand for for school choice. That means equal opportunity, a good education for every rich or poor, or whatever, a good education for every for every uh, every youth, and we stand for for jobs because with jobs goes dignity. That's what the Republican Party is. We are fighting the civil rights issues of our of our day today, uh, and I thank you all for being here. I thank you for what you do. I thank you for having the courage of your convictions. We have to go out and keep fighting for the things that we believe in because that's the only way that we're going to turn things around here in New York State. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you, George Washington. And I thank you, George. Uh, Chairman, those words. Remember, 42% graduation rate, less than 9% black males graduating, graduating uh, unprepared for college, and less than 10% graduating, uh, Latinos graduating that are not ready for college. And of that 42%, I believe MCC showed that they weren't ready for college either. But yet, our charter schools are pushing out at above.